Hey guys, Omar here, and today we're gonna look at the Frame TV. Doesn't it look totally realistic? Wait a minute. This is an actual frame. Oh, there it is. This is the Frame TV. It looks just like the Frame. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Today we're looking at the Frame TV by Samsung, and I picked up the 32 inch. Just a couple of disclaimers. Number one, I am not a TV reviewer. And also I picked this up because we're redoing our kitchen and I picked up the 32 inch specifically because it's the only one that fits in a space we <laughs> are putting it in. And uh, there are some differences between this 32 inch and the larger models, which I'll get into. Now I'll be reviewing the TV from the perspective of a regular homeowner watching TV and also a professional photographer. The plan is to have this in the kitchen so we could watch Netflix and YouTube and when we're not watching TV to display some of my photographs. So right now I have the TV on the stand. You can actually display it on the stand right here, but that's not how it's meant to be displayed. So I won't be mounting it in this video, but I will hold it up against the wall so you could see how that looks. Now, if you do want to display your art or your photographs on a TV and make it look like a frame, there's nothing else on the market unless you sort of build a regular TV and sort of put a fake frame around it. So this frame TV is thinner and can be mounted flush to the wall, just like any picture frame. And then there's a cable called the One Connect cable, which uh, is connected to a One Connect box. And that's where you put in your Roku, your DVD player, your USB drive that maybe holds all your photographs. Now in the larger models, it's a very thin fiber optic cable that you can actually you know, paint over or just have it showing on the wall. It's pretty thin. But one thing with this 32, you know, the 32 inch one, it comes with a much <laughs> thicker cord, which I was a little surprised with. I thought it would come with a little fiber optic one connect cable. Now for me, it turns out this isn't a problem because we're going to, in the construction, have the wires go through the wall so you don't see them. But just keep that in mind that you're not gonna get the invisible cable that comes with some of the larger models. Now, what do you get in the box? Well, obviously you get the TV, you get two little leg stands, which are actually can be connected. That's one thing I like. Um, the little leg stands are these little plasticky leg stands, but they can be snapped uh, flush with in the back of the body. So that way, once you mount the TV for years, you know, you don't lose the legs. So that's kind of a cool feature is the little mounting legs can be stored with the TV. It comes with a remote, which comes with batteries. The newer models or the larger models come with USB charging remotes. The older models and this 32 inch, you still need AA batteries, which is a pain. The TV also comes with mounting hardware. And note, a lot of reviews I saw about mounting this TV, some were kind of negative that it was difficult to mount. So if you're not good at that stuff, like I'm not good at that stuff, definitely get someone professional to mount the TV before destroying your wall. <laughs> Check the reviews. Some people had to go out to the hardware store and get like different bolts because they don't, they're not flush to the wall. So make sure you check that out. Note that the 32 inch is 1080p. I wish it was 4K. I'll get to that a little bit later, but there is no 32 inch 4K option. You have to bump up to 43 inches, 55 inch and higher to get the 4K. Now the 32 inch comes with a one connect box that's a little smaller. It's like a one connect, one connect mini, um, which is kind of cute. And uh, just note that if you get the bigger ones, you get a little bit of a larger uh, one connect box. All right, so what do we think of the TV? As an overall review, I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's awesome that it looks like a frame I think it's awesome that you can display your own artwork. Like this is a photograph of my son in Maine and you can kind of customize the size of this bezel. So you can actually go to the matte options. Here we go. You have a couple of matte options. You can actually change from, you know, display with no matte. So the, you know, you could go to the borders, but I feel this kind of kills the illusion for your photographs. I actually like to show a little bit of matte you can go for a thin mat, like this one right here, 
And then you can go uh, what's called Modern Mat, which uh, is kind of my favorite. The Modern Mat has a neat little bezel look here. So on the edge of the image, it kind of looks like it is a real paper mat. And then there's an option called Shadow Box Mat, and this is my least favorite. This is kind of like your paper, uh, your paper photograph is floating over the white, but it just looks a little fake. So I would definitely go with the Modern Mat. One thing to note about cropping your photographs, you need to crop, if you're putting your own artwork on the uh, TV, you need to crop your images to exactly 1080p. There's a couple of things that happen when you do that. The first thing is you get the option to have no mat. You get the option to have the thin mat and this mat right here gives you a couple of mat options. Now, if you don't upload your image at 1080p, then it kind of loses the, the cool matte effect right here. There, it's, the border's a little thin at the bottom. And the other thing that happens is you're kind of limited with your, uh, your matte options. You can't have no matte, like the TV won't zoom into your image. It won't put a perfect matte over um, an image that's not 1080p. So that is a little bit of a negative, is someone that doesn't have perfect 1080, 16.9 photos, they're gonna see this. You're gonna get an image that has thin on the bottom and you just get the shadow box and the modern mat, that's it. You don't get any kind of no mat option or a thin mat. Your image has to be cropped to 1080p. So it'd be cool if the TV had a little bit more automated for non-photographers, a little bit, you know, a little bit better, more options for the mat. Now you can change the color of the mat here, which is, you know, like if you want it to match. And what's cool is it just remembers per photo. So right now, if you, that is so ugly. <laughs> if you wanted this mat for this picture, it's the only one that's gonna look that way, which is cool. Okay, here we have a Fujifilm Street image. Again, it's cropped wrong, but I wanted to show you something cool that the TV does. At first I thought it was completely cheesy, and then I started doing it with more of my photos and it's pretty cool. If you wanna change one of your photos to maybe like a graphic art or some kind of painting, at the bottom there are actually options to add a photo filter. And some of them look good, it depends on the photo, but some of them look good, some look cheesy. But my favorite one is this Art Deco one. It, it just brings the colors out, it sort of smears it into paint. And so you can have some of your images look like paintings, which is pretty cool. All right, for example, here's one of my landscape images. Here we go, let's Bob Ross this mother, here we go. Oh, wow. So you see, you could take some of your images and maybe just to play around, you can make some of them more artistic <laughs> than you could do. I will say as I'm changing these things around that the user interface of this TV is a little clunky. Uh, settings changes are a little slow, some things are delayed. Uh, it's just not a super fast user interface. If you're gonna use the television, the Netflix and the Disney and all that stuff, I would probably hook up a Roku to the One Connect box and use that user interface, which is probably a lot simpler. Here's another photograph from Vancouver. Uh, it looks great on the TV, it'll look great on a wall. And there is a sensor for light. So what's neat is it will dim if the lights are dim and if like the sun is coming in or if it's bright, it will adjust its brightness automatically. Uh, you should think about where you're gonna mount it. Definitely don't mount it anywhere there's gonna be any kind of glare. You don't wanna hang up the TV with a window showing in the reflection, okay? Try to pick a wall where the, the window is side lit or the TV is side lit. But picture quality, the blacks are really black and deep. So this whole QLED technology, Samsung just makes great TVs. Um, the picture quality looks great. I played a lot of sample 8K footage. And although the TV is 1080p, the picture is incredibly crisp and amazing. Looks beautiful. For the regular TV settings, you can dial in a lot of the settings. You can dial in the temperature of the TV, if you can actually customize what you want the picture to look like. Do you want it to be very movie-ish and warm looking or do you want it to be bright and vibrant and uh, more color accurate? So you, it has all the picture controls that all the Samsung TVs have. However, one negative is that those picture controls don't kind of, don't go into the frame settings. So for the photo settings, it's a little bit limited. You can only set 
the brightness and also the tone. So you can go from cooler to warmer, or you can go from bright to dim. And one of the things I found is the TV will display your images a little warmer than their true self. So I have a calibrated monitor, and so I know the exact colors that I'm getting or that should be output. And when I put them on the TV, they're about 500 Kelvin warmer. And so if you want to display your artwork a little bit more accurate to what your camera saw and what your TV saw, then before you export them to 1080p, I put them all on a little thumb drive, cool them all down, and I would brighten them up about half a stop. And then they look really great or they look closer to what they were supposed to. If, you're, if you don't adjust your images, then you can go to the coolest setting and that's probably the most accurate setting for photographs. Now, should you get a 1080p or a 4K one, let's say you're going between the 43 and the 32, it all has to do with viewing distance. So if I'm playing Disney, uh, the Avengers on here, I'm not gonna sit one foot away from the TV. So um, if you're about four feet away from this TV, it's gonna look like a 4K TV. If the source is, uh, like I said, Netflix or YouTube, it just looks amazing. If you put your face up right up to the TV, it, you're gonna see all the little pixels. It doesn't look like as clear as a 4K TV. Now, some of the photographs that I put up, like actually this one, when I compared it to my 5K monitor, you can see the difference in quality. You can see that the 5K monitor, all the little wires on these boats right here are sharp. And if you see them on the TV or if you're looking for it, you're gonna see that they're not as crisp. So go for the 4K model if that's gonna bug you. I'm totally okay with it because not only do photographs look great from a distance here, but the artwork looks awesome. When you play art on here, uh, you know, you don't really need detail because it's like, you know, oil paintings and what's more important there is the color and sort of the matte look to it. So I love that. Sound wise, to me, if it's in a small room, it's good enough, but you're gonna have to turn it way up to get any kind of movie sound from it. The speakers, you know, come out of the bottom. I would get a sound bar and put it with the quick connect cable. That's what we're planning to do because the TV is definitely not loud enough for me but it's fine for casual watching um, you know, in a smaller room. If you're putting this in a larger room, it may completely get lost. Now, as far as artwork goes, this I found on the internet. So if you find artwork and put it on a thumb drive, you can display it on this TV. Try to make sure that it's 1080p so that you can have the different matte options, especially the one that's no matte. All right, so is the Frame TV worth it? Well, the positives are your images look great on there. There's no other TV that can mimic a frame with the little mat and everything as easy as this. Uh, it sits flush on the wall. It has the one connect cable, which I really like. If, um, if you get the higher models and you have that fiber optic one, that could be your option to hide the cable. Uh, movies look great, 4K, 8K looks great at 1080p. The blacks are beautiful on this TV, so the picture quality is great. On the TV side and movie side, there's a lot of uh, you know, options to adjust your color settings, which is the positive. Some negatives, the sound's a little meh. It depends on how I have a surround sound system in our basement TV, so sound to me is important. Some other downsides are the, I don't love the user interface of the Samsung TVs. It's a little slow and delayed and clunky. So get yourself a Roku and connect that to the One Connect box. Now, although the picture quality is great, for the price you can get better TVs for less money, even from Samsung. Uh, but again, you pay for this TV because of it's you know a one trick pony. It's the only one that can look like a frame. And oh, by the way, I wanted to mention you can buy customizable colors for the frame. And right now they're being bundled together, which if you can do, do that. I didn't do that because I did, wasn't sure of what color we needed. But now I want a white frame for our, our what we're doing in the kitchen. And what I'm doing instead, because it's like $100 for the little clicky frame you can put on there, is Lifehack. They had a yellow one for $29 and I'm just going to paint it. So that's a life hack for you right there. And lastly, I think if you're not a photographer or a stickler for color control, you're not gonna be bothered by what the images are doing. You know, it's only when you go side by side or where you're a professional and you work with color all the time 
that you'll notice that the images are too warm. And the other negative is for beginners, cropping the 1080p is a little bit of a pain to make sure that it's 1080p to get all the matte options. Other than that, I think the, the frame TV for photographers is a win. All right, I'll see you guys next time.